improve. And third, we need to ensure that we have a rigorous planning system in place which prevents unwise developments in flood risk areas. And I think the second and third of these points especially have some real relevance to people in this room today. So data. I think we certainly need to consider how flood hazard and flood risk data can be kept as accurate and up-to-date as possible and how it might be shared. And this is because data is critical to a number of different processes. The planning and implementation of flood defences, for insurance companies to price risk effectively, and also to enable consumers and developers to make informed choices about their investments in flood risk areas. So there's a huge collective benefit. And in the future, we may see a transition from data being much more done on a national level in the way we see it now, a lot of responsibility for the environment agency, etc., etc., to quite a lot more of a localised approach with opportunities for surveyors to get involved in flood risk-related issues a lot more than they do at the moment. And I think that's quite an exciting opportunity going forwards. And then the third point, planning. And this is the last area I wanted to touch on before handing over to Gay. There'll be one more mention of the Statement of Principles, the flooding agreement, and that's because it does not apply to developments built after the 1st of January 2009. Thinking, I guess, is that they should know better by now. We understand the need for new and affordable housing to be built. The statistics tell us the UK needs 250,000 new homes each year, but supply last year only reached 130,000. There's a big gap. But despite this, we're increasingly concerned at some of the planning decisions we're seeing, where developments are granted permission to build in flood risk areas or floodplains, and we simply can't have this continuing. A common joke I hear is about seeing housing developments in places like the Water Meadows or Swan Lake. They have all these kind of water-related names that just kind of give away the fact that it's going to end up being a flooding disaster. In fact, I saw a recent BBC News article which had a video of uh, a property that had been built on somewhere called Washaway Beach. It turned out to be a pretty literal name. But the serious point is that prospective developers must take flood risk into account before committing themselves to sites or projects, and they need help to do this. And planning decisions, too, must take account of proper flood risk management measures, or else there's a risk that these developments will struggle when it comes to insurance. If this doesn't happen, and the worst should occur people living in badly planned and poorly built developments could find themselves in exceptionally difficult circumstances. So for our part, the ABI has done quite a bit of work producing guidance to try and guide people through the planning process. So in 2009, we produced guidance on insurance issues for new developments, which was guidance that was aimed at uh, developers and uh, potential purchasers as well, to ensure that they understood the issues with flood risk and insurance, and to ensure that new developments can rise to the challenge of managing flood risk effectively. And that was so successful, we're producing similar guidance for local authorities, local planning authorities, I should say, this year, to try and help them navigate the issues they face. And my hope is that working together, we can start to move away from bad planning decisions. So to conclude, I guess I should say that insurers are doing as much as they can to help those who've been flooded. But stopping people being flooded in the first place needs to be the real goal, and people can't forget that. In an ideal world, there'd be enough money to spend on flood risk management that the problem would be spent away. But we don't live in an ideal world. The situation as it stands means that we have to make the most of the situation and work together to deliver innovative solutions to the various problems that we face. And delivering innovative solutions is something I'm sure many people in this room have the potential and the expertise to help to deliver. And now I'm going to hand over to Gay, who's going to talk about best practice in flood risk due diligence. Thank you very much.